Kurt Lewin's freeze phases is one of the models that every change agent and project manager needs to be aware of. Lewin was one of the first people to systematically study how change works, yet his model remains valid. So, a good understanding of Lewin's freeze phases is important for every project manager whose project is likely to create organisational or cultural change. So in this video, we'll answer the question, what are Kurt Lewin's freeze phases? The need for change in our organisations will never end. And therefore, the ability to steer our organisations and their people through the changes is one of the principal challenges for organisations and for their managers, and of course, for project managers. So, what is the process to support people through change? What are the stages they go through, and how do we guide them? This is a question that was addressed by Kurt Lewin, one of the principal psychologists of the 20th century. Among many contributions to our understanding of organisational life, Lewin gives us a three-stage model of how change works which has come to be called the freeze phases model. But Lewin's first observation was that we are all subject to a number of forces within our environment. There are driving forces which propel us towards change and there are restraining forces which hinder our adoption of that change. This gives rise to Lewin's idea of force field analysis. Importantly, the restraining forces consist of two types. First, there is our inward resistance to change, which is deep and psychological. And second, there is our more shallow need to conform to the norms of our society and our comfort with the existing norms with which we conform. Before we can change then, we need to overcome these restraining forces. We need to overcome our resistance and our desire to conform with what we believe are the current norms of our organisation or our society. Therefore, Lewin named the first of his phases of change unfreezing. And in the unfreezing stage, we're starting to loosen up these established patterns of behaviour and thought. We are recognising that change has to happen. The way we do this is that we challenge established beliefs, established ideas, even established values and we start to recognise that there are alternatives. This is not trivial because resistance is powerful. It's almost as if we are wired to resist change, largely because of the comfort we feel in our existing situation and the fear we feel for what is coming. However, the more we're exposed to new ideas and new possibilities, the looser our affiliation to the existing status quo is and we start to unfreeze. Lewin's second phase is changing, and this is where we can lead people from the status quo ante, the way things were before, to the new, changed environment and the new way of doing things. If we're going to guide them well, however, we need to recognise that this is a time of great uncertainty for people. This uncertainty is going to come back in waves, causing new levels of resistance. And so it's rarely a simple movement from A to B. What we are more likely to see is levels of commitment that peak and trough. And sometimes people want to move back the way they'd come. Other times they're eager to move forward. Strong leadership is vital during the changing phase. Because this tendency of people's commitment to go up and down and for the resistance to grab hold of them means that weak leadership will make people susceptible to other influences, which is why we observe that things like gossip and rumour are so powerful in times of change. In the absence of a good, effective and strong leader, people will follow anyone who seems to have an answer for them, even if that answer isn't in the long term good for them. Eventually, however, people will reach a new understanding and they will start to adopt some of the new ways of working they will be reaching the end of the changing phase and entering the freezing phase or the refreezing phase, 
because now we are refreezing them into a new status quo, into a new way of being. During the refreezing phase, people start to understand the new ways of working and they start to look for ways to take advantage. They will settle into it and find their own balance. Of course, for some people, the changes are not good. They will look at the new way of working, they will look at the new situation they find themselves in and recognize that it is not right for them. For those people, the refreezing stage is more about stepping away from the new changed environment into something radically different. They're going to go into a bigger and more fundamental change, possibly leaving the organization altogether and possibly even changing their whole lifestyle. So Lewin's model is really simple. First of all, we have to unfreeze from the way we did things before. Then we have to change to the new way of doing things. And then we have to refreeze by becoming familiar and adopting the new norms of the new ways of doing things. Now, it's important to note that Lewin's use of the term phases suggested to many people that these were three static stages in the process. In truth, what's really going on is a continuum, a movement from one thing to another in a fluid way. This perhaps contributed to a diminution of the use of Lewin's freeze phases. It is, after all, around 100 years old as an idea. It's easy to think that Lewin's freeze phases have no more value for us, they've dropped out of use, but it couldn't be farther from the truth. Because Lewin's freeze phases were picked up by William Bridges and his books, Transitions and Managing Transitions, about personal change and organizational change, use a very similar three stage model. He describes the three stages as letting go, the neutral zone, and new beginning. And his books are now 40 years old, but receive constant reprints. The newest edition of Transitions, the 40th anniversary edition, is very recent. And a couple of years earlier, we saw a new edition of Managing Transitions. So Lewin's ideas are very current. And they're very current because they work. They explain how people transition. They explain the changes that people go through. And therefore, they give us good guidance as project managers and leaders of change into how to facilitate the process of organizational change and to take people along the journey. Please do give a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll be making loads more great project management content, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.